Oh, you're so screwed. Oh, I see you. You're so dead. Oh, reload. Ugh. Uh. What the hell? <laughs> you killed me? That's right. How did you not die? <laughs> Body armor. Body? Dude, it's post-apocalyptic America. You. You can't go to the freaking gun shop and buy some body armor. How did you get body armor? Yeah, I crafted it, bro. Out of what? Uh, duct tape and metal plates. Dude, you <laughs> cannot craft a bulletproof vest out of duct tape and metal plates. <laughs> like scientists work in labs and like, you know, use beakers and shit to make this stuff. That's such crap. That's such crap. <laughs> it's crap, dude. I also use a crafting table. It's not even scientific! <laughs> hey guys, I'm Andrew. And I'm Randy. And this is Desert Derpers. And today we're going to be kind of dispelling a myth. And the myth we're going to look at is we love to play video games. And we love games like Dying Light, Dead Rising, Borderlands. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. And they've all got really cool crafting systems where you can take junk, basically, or stuff you'd find at your average hardware store and craft it into things like saws with electricity and like and bulletproof vests. And, and bulletproof vests, and, body armor. And so, but body armor is one of the things we were looking at. Because we know body armor takes a lot of, of work. To, to make body armor work, it takes, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of scientific know-how. But we wanted to see if you could take just stuff from your average hardware store, which this is just quarter inch steel, and this is a quarter eighth inch Lexan, impact resistant Lexan. We wanted to see if we could make our own body armor. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be making our own body armor and then testing it out. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna find out, see if we can do what they do in video games at their crafting tables. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so here we have that uh, quarter inch uh, steel. Uh, I don't know its strength or durability. It's definitely not ballistic steel. It's definitely just hardware store steel. And over here we have impact resistant Lexan. Uh, so we're going to do a layering of these and that's going to be, so it's going to be, uh, it's going to be Lexan and then steel and, and then, then another Lexan on top of that. And then on top of that will be the second piece of steel. Yeah. And we'll be, and then we're going to duct tape this whole business together and we'll be shooting at it from this side right there. Now we did the math on this and to make a, a, a chest plate out of this it would weigh something like six pounds or six and a half pounds all right so it'll, it'll definitely be a good ratio for the weight on your body to be able to move around and do things you normally would do in the yeah. situations that you would use body armor with yeah so it'd be functional so like i said about six and a half pounds all right well we're gonna get this taped up get it down range and we'll see what's going on all right, we got our homemade body armor uh, down range 25 yards. Uh, the first gun that we're going to be using is the Remington 597, uh, chambered with the 22 LR. And we're going to find out how much uh, damage it does to the body armor, if any. Hey guys, so this is my uh, Savage A17 chambered in 17 HMR, and again we're going to take another shot at the uh, homemade body armor out of this guy. So, and I'm shooting the uh, the A17 CCI, the, the round specially made for this rifle. They've got a muzzle velocity of like 2650, so we're going to take this shot. Okay guys, so my next shot is going to be out of my Rock Island uh, 1911 chambered in 9mm and I'm firing uh, federal 150 grain ball ammo out of this and we're going to put it into our homemade body armor.
Hey guys, so this is the Reaper TR 20 gauge shotgun. Uh, I have another video on this shotgun on the channel and we're gonna be uh, shooting some uh, three quarter ounce slugs at our homemade body armor. Um, so let's see uh, how that all works out. So guys, this is the uh, 308 uh, Ruger American Predator. It's chambered, like I said, in 308. And we're gonna be firing um, 189 grain core-locked Remingtons at our homemade body armor. Um, so, here we go. So hey guys, we're back at the table here. We have our our piece of homemade body armor right here. And <laughs> to be honest, we are completely and utterly shocked. We can't we we can't believe it. Yeah. So this, this was just the results were absolutely the opposite of what we were expecting. So uh yeah, because we've tested some other video game stuff, like we did a shotgun video uh showing the lethality of a shotgun at, at much longer ranges than melee, like most video games. So you know that was bunked. Video games were wrong on that. So when we try, when we thought of doing this video for the for the homemade body armor, we thought, oh man, this. I mean, what are you gonna what are you gonna make that you can wear on your body that's bulletproof? You can make this. That's so we're right. gonna. So we're super excited to crack this guy open. So on here, you can see, on here, this is your 22, right? This is your 17. Okay. Then we got your 9mm right here. On the bottom. And then you got the awesome shotgun giant slug. hole right there, the slug. Yeah. And then the 308 right here. And then if we flip this over, <sighs> nothing. We got a little bulge on the 308 right here. There's like a little perceivable bulge on the 308. But nothing. Nothing went through it. Nothing. It's pretty awesome. We're pretty stoked about it. So we want to cut it open. So as we, when we finish this, we're gonna make, we're actually gonna take this into step two and we're gonna make a full, uh, a full, full, on, a full uh, vest out vest of it. There. So here, let's fold the first panel back and this is the Lexan. Okay. <laughs> oh, Still so high. here's your, so here's your shotgun slug right here in the plate, <laughs> right there. <laughs> Uh, so the 22 did not even make an impact. The 17 actually made a, yeah. put a dent in the plate. They actually did. put a dent in the plate right there. Here, let's, uh, let me get this up to the camera so they can see it a little closer. Okay. So this is the, the first of the plates. It doesn't look like the, the millimeter went in. The nine millimeter? Yeah. No, I don't think it went past the Lexan. So we have, here's where the 22 hit. And you can see it's a little scuffed. Here's the 17. It actually put a decent little crater in it, right? Here's the shotgun slug. And this is the first of the steel plates right behind the first uh, sheet of Lexan. Right down here is where the nine hit. It didn't even make a scuff. I think it stopped in the, and here's your slug. This <laughs> is your disco biscuit right there. <laughs> and there's your 308 punched right through that steel right through that steel but it did not penetrate the full body armor so we're curious to see where where it actually ended up so here's your here's the here's the inner the um middle piece of lexan so it goes lexan steel and then another piece of lexan 22 did nothing 17 did nothing to this the slug actually put a dent put a dent in this um the plate on the back of this plate is bulged out like crazy. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty bulged. Actually, it's a little bulged from the 17. Oh uh, yeah, there is. And it's a little bulged from the 17 and there's your your uh, 308. So we got that there. So there's your slug, 22 here, um, 17, slug, nine didn't even go through the first part of the Lexan or didn't even you know, finish through it. And then your 308, which made a giant hole right here. So we're gonna move on to the third plate. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's, there's the end of it. 
Okay, so we have the 308 right there. Most of the bullet uh, stayed against the plate. So on the back plate, it's relatively unscarred, right? Yeah, the uh, the shotgun put a slight, and you're not gonna be able to see it unless you're in person looking yeah. at it, but there is a slight indentation from the shotgun, but the 308, you can definitely see the impact. We'll get the... Yeah, I'm gonna get this plate off for you. All right, so here's the final back plate right here and you can, as you can see we went from left to right with everything and there's nothing there's just nothing and there's a subtle I mean it's 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 really subtle the the divot here for the uh, for the slug but the 308 man look at the look at the bend in the plate look at the dimple in the back of the plate but it stopped it, it completely stopped it solid dead and most of the 308s right here Fucking train. So um, here's the uh, here's the the lead from the slug. Here's the lead from the 308. So uh, I I really think the Lexan's integral to um, to stopping the to stopping these bullets, especially the 308. We've shot steel out here, just this this standard this sheet stock from like a hardware store. It's it's quarter inch thick, but we shot it and it, we punch we always punch right through it. As a matter of fact, here's the first layer. All right, I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a hole punch. And then if you see it, would it would have stacked on here like that. And I think it would have passed right through both. I don't think it would have had a problem. Uh, I think the the Lexan's playing a big part. So yeah. This is all from a hardware store, so pretty cool. So you can make body armor from a hardware store. So guys, it looks like we're gonna go back and uh, we're gonna actually do like a part two to this because it was so encouraging and we're gonna make an actual vest out of duct tape, Lexan and, and steel plates and, and make an actual you know bulletproof vest and take it out to the range and have uh, set it up and shoot it and see if we can uh, See how much we can stop. We'll pump a bunch of yeah. we'll pump a bunch of lead into it. We're also going to uh, try just getting three or four of these uh, plates and putting them together and see how well the bullets go through that and see how much of an important part the Lexan actually played in today's yeah. video. Yeah, I think I think the Lexan played a big part, but like I said, we've shot that steel before. We've shot steel like that before, and it, it always just hole punches it like that. You can't shoot it with a 308. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it would have passed through those two plates pretty easily, maybe even into a third one. So we're going to test that too when we come back with the, uh, with the fully constructed vest. But uh, that's it for today, guys. We're going we're gonna to call it a day. I'm pretty tired. Yep. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. All right. So remember, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next Desert Derpers.